Back here on Sports Overtime, our annual visit from Mike Knubel, former East Kentwood Falcon, Michigan Wolverine, Red Wing, Ranger, Bruin, Flyer. I think I got them all. <laughs> well, welcome back home for the summer. It's good to be home. You're, you've got some nice weather, starting to uh, get out and uh, in, enjoy a hot, humid summer, I guess, like, like everyone else is, right? Yeah, and then you do your best. You know, you want the warm weather, and then you do your best to stay out of it, I guess, <laughs> and stay cold again. <laughs> That's the way it goes. How, how is summer going? You guys have been back here for the summer. Yeah. Obviously, your, your kids now are, what, 10, 11, and 7? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. so your kids are getting older. Your kids are yeah. in school full-time. Yeah. So when the season ends uh, in D.C., you're still down there now. You're kind of more around their schedule than yours to, yes, to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah, well, just like any other parent I mean I just become a taxi and that but you know I, I like I get a chance to go to all the practices watch the games and that and I really enjoy that I think that's it's been a lot of fun and um, to watch them grow as athletes and watch them play sports and, and do all that stuff that we, you know we all got to do as kids so it's fun to watch them play that's what I've been doing you know basically after our season ended and then even coming back here 14 years now in the National Hockey League what's that like now having kids you know to go through that process of you know little babies and dealing like that and now your kids are old enough where they're aware of what dad's doing oh yeah well yeah now my kids are you know sort of the entertainment in the room after games you know and it's fun to watch them interact with the players and um, how good the guys are to them you know after games and um, you know asking them questions and I know I think as you know as an older player I remember when I came in as a younger player that you know I thought it'd be a great idea and it was my goal as a player to to play as long as I could and to play as long as that if I did have kids that they'd remember being in a locker room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to have them around in a locker room. Uh, you know, mostly they go to weekend games, right? During school, they're not going to games that much, you know, on school nights. But, yeah, I, th I just try to be a good example for the younger players and show, you know, maybe inspire them, you know, one or two guys that will say, yeah, it'd be great someday to have my son in a locker room. Because you do, you have that in a locker room. You've got guys that are 20 years yeah. old up to, you know, you're, you're coming up, you just turned 39, so yeah. you've got that whole gamut of guys that want to go hit the clubs after games and that sort of thing, and then you guys, you know, with, like you with, with families. Yeah, I mean, you, you come in and the draft picks and the younger, younger players, I mean, I was finishing high school, you know, when these yeah. guys were born. And, wow. And so it's, it's sort of a... You know, it, it can be daunting as a player. It can make you feel old and make you feel um, a little bit tired. But at the same time, I think it's a great motivator for me as a player and probably, you know, why I've had some good success here the last few years and been able to stay in the game. 24 goals this past season and now one of just a handful of players to have scored 20 goals in eight straight seasons. Yeah, yeah. How nice is that? Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when your career started and you were trying to make a name for yourself and kind of get things going back with, you know, coming up with the Red Wings when winning a Stanley Cup and, you know, and then things kind of taken off for you and now to go eight straight years of 20 plus yeah. goals. Nice, nice run. You yeah, know, it is. I mean, it, you know, I think first, first of all, I've been put in like a spot to succeed. I've been, you're not going to score in this league in the NHL without playing with great line mates and playing with, with great players and that's a fact. I mean you need guys that can make plays and do things with the puck but um, you know I, I've been lucky, I've been fortunate. I mean I think injuries are part of our game but you know I haven't had anything that's really kept me out for a good chunk of of a season, you know, a quarter a mm -hmm. season, a half a season or anything like that. You have your various injuries here and there that keep you out for little chunks here and there. That hit with Shanahan a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a 12 <laughs> gamer or some 12, 13 <laughs> games. But, um, you, know, you know, like I said, great, great teammates, great play, great line mates, and then being, uh, staying healthy has a lot to do with it. But that's my goal every year, trying to score 20, 20 plus. Now, when you were here last year, you said one of your goals was to play in 1,000 career games. Mm -hmm. And at the time last year, you were at 800-something. You, you played this season, you missed just three games this past year, you're now up to 968. Yeah. As the regular season came to win, right as the playoffs were beginning, Caps announced they signed you to a new one-year contract for this coming season. Yeah. So barring any kind of major injury, you're going to hit the 1,000-game plateau. Yeah, we've, we've already checked it out on the schedule, you know, barring injury and all that. I mean, I guess you shouldn't talk about it that much. But So where am um, I Yeah, I think it's like right before Christmas. I want to okay. say it's like Nashville at home. Okay. And... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that'll be, that'll, you know, like, yeah, we were on the show last year, and, you know, that was my goal for that, for that, for this coming year, mm -hmm. was to reach that plateau. So, um, I, that'll be something I'd be very proud of, just to see, you know, in your career stats, you see four digits, you know, for games mm -hmm. played. I think it's, that's a big honor. And I, I want to, it's a, it's a funny number. I want to say it's like 270 guys. Okay. I mean, you could probably dig it up, but wow. it's not that many guys that you think have ever played in the NHL that have reached a thousand games. So, it's, I, 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 I 
It's something I'm really looking forward to. I think my favorite was the quote from your uh, head coach, Bruce Boudreau, who said, uh, quote, he's like a fine wine. He keeps getting better. <laughs> yeah. You like that? Yeah, yeah. That's, um, yeah. That's, you know, I, I'm lucky. You know, everybody keeps waiting for your downfall, you yeah. know. And, and, you know, granted, you know, I, I think you slow down a little bit as you get older as a player. You, your style changes, and, you know, it's not sometimes about, you know, speed all the time. You're, you're kind of uh, maybe a little bit smarter about things. And the way I score goals, you know, I, I'm around the net. I hang around the net, tips, rebounds, and stuff like that. So um, I don't have to be the one carrying the mail through the neutral zone mm -hmm. and, and, you know, racing around the ice. I just try and get to the uh, get to the front of that where I should be there. W Wings fans can relate with a certain guy named uh, Tomas Holmstrom sure. who's been doing that, that yeah. role for uh, the Wings for years. All right, yeah. so we're going to take a timeout with Mike Knubel. We'll come back and talk a little more hockey after the break. Stick around. Welcome back to Sports Overtime. Here with Mike Knubel of the Washington Capitals, talking hockey, talking about your season. Um, so you played in and scored in the annual NHL's Winter Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool! Like when when you saw the schedule, you got knew you were doing that. I guess first of all, what's the mindset of the players? Do you think gimmick or you think, oh sweet, this this is going to be fun? No, I think we all have seen you know what they've done in the past and that they've done a real nice job with the production. Every year it's a little bit better. You know, it becomes mm -hmm. more of a spectacle, and that's you know it's almost like a Super Bowl or a bowl game. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's one of 82. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't count for any more points. There's no bonuses. There's no, you know, it's one game on the schedule. But um, it was a lot of fun. The weather was kind of, kind of uh, not cooperating. Uh -huh. It was supposed to be like a <laughs> noon start on January 1st, and they pushed it back to an 8 o'clock start or 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock start in the evening. And, but it was great. The, you know, the people of Pittsburgh did a great job. And the fans were great. You know, we had a bunch of Washington people come up there too, and it was fun to have a lot of our family come out here from Grand Rapids. You know, all kind of meet down in Pittsburgh and spend New Year's in Pittsburgh and watch us win a game. It was pretty fun. And a goal and a victory yeah, uh, yeah, to, exactly. to to boot yeah. to go with it. Yeah. Um, talk about your season. I mean, the, the the team. You know, for the season that you had had the year before and kind of tore things up and then flamed out in the playoffs. Start a little slow this year, and then things kind of cranked up as the season went on. End up winning the division, make it to the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. I, I think I was in here last year. I talked about how easy the regular season went. It just went very smoothly, mm -hmm. too smoothly. And then you talk about losing the first round. Well, this year there were a little more ups and downs, some slow starts. And it actually got to a point in mid-December there, and it was all right before that Winter Classic, and and uh, where we changed some of our philosophy in our game and how we're playing the game. We ended up having a lot of success. And, the trick was we, we had been known, our identity was uh, like a high scoring team, high high risk, high reward kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of team, just trying to outscore you. But you know, then we really clamped down on the goals against, but it, uh, a kind of a, a side effect was that we lost our goals for a bit. Okay. We didn't stop scoring as much as we did. Yeah. But we ended up with a good record. We still finished strong. We had a great, I think we were finished first in our conference or second in mm -hmm. our conference, I don't even know. But uh, uh, we, we, we finished very well. So I imagine we will keep moving forward with some a lot of things that we had been working on and things that we had been doing, but uh, tweaking a couple things to try and score more goals. So how do you tweak it? From the player's perspective, you know that you, you think about what you might need to do, the coaching staff and the management may have a different thing. What, what do the Caps need to do, you think, maybe to get over the hump? Or is it one of those things you see like with Boston in this year's yeah. playoffs, Teams just get hot at the right time. Yeah, I think it is a lot of you know getting right at the, getting hot at the right time. And uh, uh, this summer, we've I think we've made some great moves. I think we added three forwards and a defenseman, and and got a veteran goalie, which I thought was something that that we could use. We were going with the young 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 goalies, but you know anybody watched the playoffs this year, and especially toward the finals, you saw just two dominant goaltenders uh, carrying their teams and. You know, that, that's what you need in the playoffs. You need that ultimately. You need that great goaltending. And I think the Capitals have made the step to uh, head in that direction. All right, you just turned 39. You've got a one year deal left. Yeah. Hoping the team's doing what, I mean, what, what you know, yeah. how, you know, you're looking at this season potentially yeah. maybe as the last. I don't know what your thoughts yeah. are, but, yeah. you know, is that there? And then how nice would it be to maybe go out with a, with a nice run here next spring? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, how it certainly make things very interesting, you know, as far as extending your yeah. career if you were to win it all next year. And then, maybe go out that way but you know to be honest I, I feel I feel good you know my body's in, in good shape and you know I feel interested and I guess as long as you can be productive and you have a good role with the team then then uh, then then you want to keep playing you know and you know if I, I you know will I continue in Washington I don't know but you know hopefully I have some more some other team would believe in me that I had some more in the tank you know and that could be could, could be productive uh, uh, for their team in some way and so I don't know I think you just got to weigh 
you know, as you get older, you, it's year by year. You yeah. know, it's the first time in my career where now it's year to year. You know, yep. before you're fighting for two, three longer year term. deals, yep. longer term, and always kind of looking to the future. And now it's really year to year. But um, you know, at the same time, maybe that lights a little more fire under you too to, to play better. You hear that, Caps? He's looking beyond this next season. <laughs> yeah. Mike, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank it you. as always. Thank you.